The Sacred Valley of Peru is home to some of the world's most pristine hiking trails. Many of the visitors flocking to Machu Picchu each year opt to arrive via the Inca Trail. As the Inca Trail grows in popularity, the Peruvian government has limited entrance to 500 hikers per day in an effort to preserve and protect the trail. Steep climbs, crowded trails, and limited entries have many people looking for alternatives to the Inca Trail. The Sacred Valley has tons of other hiking routes for people that want to do something a little different. The Lares Trail features stunning landscapes that have remained largely unchanged since the time of the Incan Empire. Along the way, travelers have the opportunity to be immersed in the indigenous culture of the Andes. Tour operators like Kusi Travel provide package deals that include transportation, orders, and entrances to Machu Picchu. They also provide camping equipment like tents and sleeping bags to help you save on checked luggage. The hike begins outside the town of Lares at 10,695 feet. It's about 2,500 feet higher than Machu Picchu. Porters load up the camping equipment onto these sturdy horses. Head up the rugged landscape to pass through traditional villages and farms. You can arrange to stop for lunch in one of the traditional stone cottages of a nearby village. Kusi Travels arranged for a chef to travel along with the group and prepare delicious meals with local ingredients. The Quechua people continue to herd alpacas and llamas using the same trails the Inca used centuries ago. The animals are prized for their wool, which is hand spun into yarn for intricately designed textiles. Each piece can take up to a month of work. They're celebrated the world over for their quality and durability. In the chilly, damp winters of the Andes, nothing holds warmth like wool. The incredibly valuable hand spun yarn can be found everywhere from factories in Lima to the runways of New York City. While hiking through the Sacred Valley, you'll have many opportunities to buy textiles directly from local producers. Above the tree line, buffeting winds prevent everything but grass and moss from growing. As the fog rolls in each evening, the mountain pass becomes an otherworldly landscape. Settle into camp for a night at 14,000 feet. Though the temperature will drop to the 20s, it's one of the best night's sleep you can get. Morning breaks and the animals begin to stir. Breakfast is served in the mess tent. The chef whips up an omelet, plantains, and even a full-on cake. Pack up camp and start your final ascent to Ipsaikasa Pass, which sits at 14,600 feet. Without altitude meds or coca leaves, a foreigner may have a tough time hiking up here. After leaving an offering to the Pachamama at the summit, begin your long hike down. They say the best cure for altitude sickness is to descend altitude. The Quechua people have been dealing with the altitude for hundreds of years. Coca leaves are legal in Peru, and they're chewed by the locals for their medicinal properties. Chewing the leaves relieves nausea, headaches, and the shortness of breath that often comes with high altitude. If you don't have a lot of time beforehand to adjust, consider packing altitude medication. On your way back down, you'll pass more alpacas and llamas. A lot of them. If you come in the spring, you'll see lots of baby alpacas fattening up before the dry summer. Make your way down through the valley to the village of Patacancha, where you'll be picked up to head on to Ollanti Tambo. Ollanti Tambo is a bustling town that was originally built by the Incas, whose architecture can be seen all around the city. You can see the three ages of Ollanti Tambo in buildings like this one. The flat stones of the Inca, the mortar and stone of the Spanish, and the modern construction materials of today. Ollanti Tambo has its own set of ruins that are worth exploring if you want to stop off for the day. But the main reason people come here is the train station. From here you can take Inca Rail to Aguas Calientes, the town at the foot of Machu Picchu. The ride itself has some pretty amazing views, but the trains can fill up quickly, so make sure to get your tickets early. Get settled into Aguas Calientes and try to get a good night's sleep. You'll be up early to make your final ascent. Since Machu Picchu can get very crowded, you'll want to get there early. That means getting in line for these buses as early as possible. Buses leave from Aguas Calientes starting at 5 a.m. and they fill up fast. Aside from walking to the top, these buses are your only way up. Once the buses begin boarding, the line moves pretty quickly. From here, it's about 30 minutes to the summit.
Arriving early means you can enjoy Machu Picchu as the morning mist blows off the mountainside. Fewer visitors means you get a little more space to yourself to enjoy the place. Take a moment to let it all sink in. After that hike, you've earned it.